Welcome pre-cal students to class today on this Tuesday the 11th. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're ready to learn some math today. Um, hope the uh, test is going well for you guys and I hope that yesterday's review was a help to you. Contact me if you have any questions about your test. You will have a quiz this Saturday so do understand that. It will be due on Tuesday. Not this week of course but next week. Your tests are due tomorrow, which is Wednesday. All questions asked, um, all of the tests turned in by Wednesday. And then please remember to stay on top of your integrity sheets. Um, they're called integrity because I trust you to be honest, and they are always due the day that we take a test, or on that Monday you come to my house. So please, don't get behind on your integrity sheets. Again, I know I've given this lecture before, and you guys probably get tired of it, <clears throat> but guys, um, most students go to school and their homework's due the next day, and that's how they do their math every day. And I know one of the positives of homeschool is you can improvise, um, but I think sometimes I know, and, and with us, sometimes we do it too much. So make sure you're doing your homework, make sure you're listening to the videos, and I would really try to do that on a daily basis and not get behind, okay? All right, having said that, let's go ahead and get started. We are going to go through chapter two in light speed. It's not too difficult of a chapter, so we're gonna take advantage of that, and we are going to move very quickly. We are starting chapter two today. We will be covering three topics today, and each one is pretty simple. They really should be, for the most part, review from algebra two. Let's start first by looking at linear equations, okay? Now that's really Algebra 1, we're going to quickly go over these and give you some to work on tonight and keep right on going, okay? Um, your heading is Solving Linear Equations, Lesson 2.1, and the date today is the 11th, if you like to keep track of that, 3-11-14. Uh, pause the video as much as you need to, and here we go, we're going to move fast. Solving Linear Equations, Lesson 2.1. Okay, let's start off with this example right here. 6x minus 4 equals 1. Uh, by the way, this will not be a long video. It should be pretty short. And you have 15 problems to work on tonight in your homework. All right. Okay, we're going to solve this linear equation. We're going to get x all by itself. So very quickly, we're going to bring this negative 4 over and make it a positive 4. And when we do that, we're left with 6x equals 5. 1 plus 4 is 5, the negative 4 is gone. And now we're going to divide both sides by 6 to get x by itself, and x equals 5 sixths. Okay? Anytime you have a fractional answer, if you can reduce it, you must reduce it, or you're going to lose points. Okay? It's very important you reduce your fractions. Okay, let's take a look at this problem. Go ahead and copy this down, and let's give this a shot. Now up here in the first problem, notice there was no simplifying Simplifying you could do on the left side. One term was an x term, and the other term was a constant term, and you cannot combine unlike terms. But here we do have some simplifying. For example, I have a 2 right outside the parentheses, so I can multiply that 2 through. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times negative 3x is negative 6x. Also over here, notice you are not multiplying a 3 through the parentheses. You're multiplying a negative 3 through the parentheses. So you bring down your positive 8, and then negative 3 times x is negative 3x, and negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. Now, usually you would be done, but look, I still have some like terms over here on this side that I can combine, okay? The positive 8 and the negative 6 are like terms. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write 10 minus 6x equals, well, a positive 8 and a negative 6 is a positive 2. And then a negative 3x, okay? Let's move this up here so we have a little more room. So what we did there basically is we simplified both sides as far as we could simplify them. And now we're ready to finish the equation. Now look students, I don't care if you get your x's on this side of the equal sign over here, or if you get your x's on this side over here. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do it both ways so you can see it doesn't matter which way you do it, okay? Over here, I'm gonna bring this negative 3x over, and I'm gonna make it a positive 3x. So now the 3x is gone, okay? 
And when I do that, I'm left with 10 minus 3x equals 2. Now, where did I get the negative 3x? Well, I brought the negative 3x over and I made it what? A positive 3x and a negative 6x and a positive 3x is a negative 3x, okay? Now, I also notice I can take this 10 and bring it over and make it a negative 10. So now this is gone and I'm left with negative 3x equals 2, negative 10 is negative 8. And now divide both sides by 3. Now be careful here, watch your signs. A negative 8 divided by a negative 3. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, and you're welcome to leave your answer 8 thirds. If you wanted to write 2 and 2 thirds, that is acceptable also. Either one of those two answers is fine, okay? Now, over here, let's do the problem again, only now this time, let's move the x's over to the right side, and let's kind of see what happens, okay? You'll get the same answer, you'll see. It's uh, pretty simple. All right, here we go. Okay, um, we're going to take the negative 6x, we're going to cross it off, and we're going to bring it over here. And when I do, I'm left with a positive 6x. Now this positive 2, I'm going to cross it off and bring it over here. And when I do that, I'm going to have a negative 2. And this, this 10, of course, right here is still positive. Okay, So I bring down my equal sign. And over here on the right side, I have negative 3x, positive 6x. On the left side over here, I have negative 2, positive 10. Now, if I combine those correctly, negative 2 and positive 10 is positive 8 negative 3x and positive 6x is 3x. Now I divide by 3 and I divide by 3 and I'm left with a positive 8 over a positive 3 is a positive 8 thirds, which is the exact same answer I got over here. So it doesn't matter which side of the equal sign you put your x's, that's irrelevant as long as you do the work correctly, okay? So that's it, that's pretty simple basic math solving linear equations pretty simple okay now let's let's learn how to find zeros of linear functions I really want to hone in this is the second topic we're looking at today there's three topics all together I really want to hone in on this phrase zeros what do I mean when I say find the zeros of a linear function well I'm glad that you asked go ahead and copy this heading down and let's get started right away and see if we can't understand or learn what this word means okay zeros of linear functions lesson 2.1 now here is the key to finding the zeros of any function if you will just understand that a zero is the exact same thing as the x-intercept that will be a huge key so the key to understanding how to find the zeros of a linear function is to understand that a zero is the exact same thing as the x-intercept. So when I am asking you to find the zeros of a function, I am really asking you to find the x-intercepts of that function. So think about that for a second. If I say find the zeros of a function, and that really means find the x-intercepts. Remember how we learned to do that in chapter 1? I told you whenever you're looking for the x-intercept, you put 0 in for y. And whenever you're trying to find the y-intercept, you put 0 in for x. It's that simple, students. So when I ask you to find the zeros of a function, I'm really asking you to find the x-intercepts of that function. So with that in mind, I would like you to find the zeros for this function. Okay, no problem. Here we go. Let's find the zeros for this function. Now, first of all, understand when I ask you to find the zeros, that's the same thing as asking you to find the x-intercept. So when this problem here says find the zeros, what it's really saying is find the x-intercepts. And how do we find the x-intercept of an equation, of a graph? We put zero and for y, but hold it. I don't see a y anywhere, but don't forget, you're more than welcome to look at f of x like it's y. So really, you could look at this problem as y equals 5x minus 9. Now where the y is, we substitute 0, <clears throat> and now we're cruising right along. Let's go ahead and bring the 9 over, and when we bring it over, we'll make it a positive 9. So the 9 is gone, 
and now I have a positive 9 over here plus a 0. Bring down your 5x. 9 plus 0 is 9. And now divide by 5 and divide by 5. And these cancel. So x equals 9 fifths or you could say 1 and 4 fifths. That would be acceptable. So you just found <clears throat> the 0 for this function right here. And you know what that really means? It just simply means this. Are you ready? Yes, I know what you're thinking. Yes, it means this is the x-intercept, and that's true. If you were to graph this linear function, here's the y-axis, the graph would go right through the y-axis at 1 and 4 fifths right there. That's true. But let me tell you what else th this zero represents and why we call it a zero. It also means this is the number here that you would put in for x that would give you out zero for y. In other words, the ordered pair 9 fifths comma zero is an ordered pair for this equation here. And that's why they call them zeros, okay? So let's go over this again. Whenever I ask you to find the zeros of a function, I am really asking you to find the x-intercepts of that function. And then don't forget, whenever you're finding the x-intercept of a function, you're putting zero in for y, okay? Let's try another problem like this, only let's, let's do one that's a graphed problem. So now let's find the zeros of the graph below. Well, this is even easier than the last problem, students, because when I say to find the zeros of this graph right here, what do I mean when I say find the zeros? That means find the what, remember? It means find the x-intercepts. In this case, just one. So this is your y-axis. This is your x-axis. So where does this red line cross the x-axis at? Right here. And where is that? One, two, three, four. So, the zero for this graph right here is x equals 4, because that's where the graph crosses the x-axis at. So I'm going to say this now for the third or fourth time. When I ask you to find the zero of a function, I'm, real, I'm really asking you to find the x-intercept. And the reason that's so important is later on, before the semester's over, we're going to be finding zeros of second degree, third degree, and fourth degree equations. And I don't ever want you to lose sight of the fact that whenever you're finding the zeros of a function, you're really finding the x-intercepts. Okay, well let's continue on to our last topic, and then we're finished for the day. I told you it'd be a pretty short video and about 15 problems in your homework. Last of all today, we're going to look at solving multi-variable equations. That means more than one variable equations. Um, the lesson number is so, the lesson is uh, solving multi-variable equations. The lesson number is 2.1, and the date today is the 11th. The date is the 11th. Okay, solving multi-variable equations. Now, the key to solving these equations is really simple. Are you ready? It's really simple, men. Isolate the variable you are solving for. That's it. Whatever variable you are solving for, isolate it. Get it all by itself. And if you won't lose sight of this one thing or this one goal, if you will, then you should be fine. That's the only thing you have to remember is to get the variable you're solving for all by itself. So with that in mind, let's solve a couple of these multivariable equations. For example, I want you to solve this equation here for L. So here's my equation, P equals 2L plus 2W. Now I want to solve this equation for L. That means I want to get L by itself. So if I want to get L by itself, then that means the first thing I'd better do, you could try to get rid of this 2 right here by dividing everything by 2, but that's really going to be a pain. I don't recommend that. You should always get rid of the coefficient, and the coefficient is this number right here. You should always get rid of the coefficients last. You really should, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross off the 2w, and I'm going to bring it over to the other side. So now I have 2, and by the way, it was a positive 2w, so when I bring it over, it becomes a negative 2w plus p. So do you see what I did? I picked up this term right here, 2w, 
and I brought it to the left side of the equal sign, and now it's a negative 2w plus p. Bring down your 2l. And now, in order to get l by itself, you must divide each term by 2. If you divide this term by 2, you're left with l. Now don't forget, there's a what in front of the p here? A 1. So really you have 1 over 2. So you would have 1 over 2 p plus, and then here, be careful, look at your sign here, you have a negative 2 divided by a positive 2, that's a negative 1 w. A negative 2 divided by a positive 2 is a negative 1. Now, if you don't want to put the 1 there, and you just want to leave it negative w, that's fine. I have no problem with negative w plus 1 half p equals l. If you want to keep the 1 there, that's fine also. But how do you know that you're finished? Well, you know that you're finished. Let me grab a drink here real quick. You know that you're finished because the l is all by itself. And isn't that what the problem said to do right here? Solve for l. So if you're solving for l, you want to know what l is, so you get l all by itself. Okay, and that's what we did. Okay, the next problem is a little more difficult, but you'll get a lot of practice in your homework tonight. I think that'll help you a lot. Here's the last one we're going to do, and then I'll give your homework to you. A equals P plus PRT, and we're solving for P. Now, in the last problem, would you please look over here and pay attention to this, guys? Look, we were solving for what? L. And how many terms had an L? This term did not have an L, this term did not have an L, but this term did. And so we just had one term to deal with that had the letter L. This problem is going to be a little more difficult. That's not the case in this problem because look, this term here does not have a P, that's true, but this term does and this term does. Okay, so here's what you need to do, please watch carefully. First of all, <clears throat> Let's pretend for a second, just humor me and watch this. Let's pretend for a second that this A, that this A right here was on the other side over here, and this P right here was on the left side like this. Okay? Now, if that was the case, let me tell you right now, the first thing you want to do, please listen to me, is to get all of your P terms on one side. So this P term here would need to go to the other side, and this A term here would need to come over here. So that's the first thing you want to do. Now, back here, it didn't matter so much because we just had one term that had an L, and that was it. But that's not the case with this problem, like I mentioned to you earlier. Okay? So... Because we have two terms with a P in them, we have to get all of those terms on the same side. Now, if you'll notice, that's already been done for you in the original problem. They're both terms that had a P were already on the same side, and the term that did not have a P was on the other side, and that's fine. They kind of helped you out a little bit there, okay? And uh, But I want you to understand, sometimes that's not going to be done for you. Now, we want to solve for P. Now, we really don't want to divide by RT. That's not going to help because there's no RT with this P. Here's what you want to do. Whenever you're in a situation like this, factor out the common P, okay? Factor it out. And now watch this. Make sure we do this correctly. P times 1 is P, so we're good there. And then P times RT is PRT, so we're good there. Okay? So we factor out a P. Now why would I do that? Well look guys, P is being multiplied times this parentheses, correct? And so now I can divide by 1 plus RT as long as I divide the other side by 1 plus RT. R, T. And now watch what happens. This group here would cancel with this group here, leaving you with just P. And over here, nothing cancels. You're left with A over 1 plus R, T. And there you did it. How do you know that you're done? Well, you know that you're done because P is all by itself. And there's no P's over here on the left side. So we know that we're finished, okay? We have solved the equation for P. So you'll have about, I'm not sure how many of these tonight to work on, but I've given you a total of 15 problems altogether uh, for your homework. When you first look at the assignment, it looks like a lot, but it's only 15 problems. So go ahead and get started on this. 
There's a homework help video to help you. If you have any questions at all, call or email if you have any questions. And make sure you get those tests turned in by tomorrow, okay? Um, have a good day, and we'll talk to you later.